Yo, what is going on guys? Bobby here and today we are going to be answering the question that is the biggest question in Brawl Stars for the next two weeks. Who is going to win World Finals? Now, I wish the answer would be me and I wish I knew the answer right now, but unfortunately I'm not playing and I also haven't invented time travel yet. So we are going to be using all the information I have as a pro, all the information my pro friends have given me and just everything I know about Brawl Stars to give you guys the most accurate guess at who I think is going to win. Before we get into it, though, I'm going to give you guys a quick explanation on how it works. There are four different groups of three. All of these groups are going to be played on day one and two teams out of each group are going to move on. At the end of day one, 12 teams are going to be cut down to eight and four of the first seeds in each group are gonna be facing four of the second seeds in each group. If you're curious to know exact matchups, group A faces group C and group B faces group D. So I can't predict who's gonna win worlds before predicting who's gonna make it out of groups. So let's talk about the groups a little bit. Now, starting off with group A, which I think is the second most difficult group, we have SK, Elevate, and Foot. So when predicting groups, I kind of look at three different things. I look at one, how good are you right now? Two, have you experienced worlds before or a land before? Have you been in this situation before? And then three, do you match up well versus your opponents? So I don't want to ramble too much about each group, so I'm going to try and keep it to a minimum. But what I noticed from this group is two teams, SK and Foot, have a lot of land experience and Elevate don't, and that's something that really pops out at me straight away. Normally, that's honestly enough for me to just say that SK and Foot would go through instead of Elevate but I have to give Elevate a lot of props. They're currently the number one team in North America. They probably have been for the last three or four months, and they are just doing awesome right now, and I have no bad things to say about them. If this was online and we could play today for who wins worlds, I would honestly maybe pick Elevate. Maybe there's a little bit of NA bias, sure, but that's not the case. It's a LAN, and they have never performed at a LAN before. Now, despite their LAN experience, I do still think that they are so good right now that they are gonna make it out of groups. And the last thing that I notice is just like us at STMN and SK last year, Foot had a really good LCQ and they could ride that momentum into Worlds and make a really nice Worlds deep run. There's also SK, but it's it's hard to talk about SK because they they have the LAN experience, they have the drafts, they have the play style, and they're just a really good team with really good players. So I have nothing negative to say about SK. Now you guys could probably tell why I think this is the second hardest group because you know, the three teams in here are just insane, but I'm gonna have to go SK finishing first seed, Elevate finishing second seed, and unfortunately Foot finishing in the last seed and not making it out of day one. Moving on to group B and what I think is the most difficult group to predict at least, we have Pioneers, Totem, and Space Station Gaming. Now what's jumping out at me straight away is that I love how Pioneers draft a lot more than I like how Totem and Space Station draft. And this is big kudos to Philip. He's probably the best coach in the world. If you guys are up to date with Brawl history, you guys know that Philip almost got China their very first international win against LG at Worlds last year, just barely losing on double match point. But again, the same trend as we had in Group A with Elevate, Totem and Space Station Gaming have a very, very large LAN experience diff. All three players on Totem have performed at Worlds for the last four years, which is just absolutely insane. Hats off to them. And Space Station Gaming, same thing, have Worlds caliber players. Now, something that also jumps off the screen to me is Totem had a really good LCQ. They beat Navi, they beat Toxic Lotus, and they beat Tribe Gaming. So they had a really awesome LCQ run, and that momentum is definitely going to ride into Worlds. So normally, I would have Totem finishing first in this group, and then probably Pioneer second and Space Station third. South America, please, I don't hate you guys, I promise. But because it's a LAN, I'm gonna give Space Station and Totem a little bit more credit than I am gonna give Pioneers. And I'm gonna say this group is a three-way tie and everyone goes one win and one loss. Moving on to Group C, which is by far the group of death at Worlds. I mean, wow, this is just such an incredible group. We have Crazy Raccoon, Zeta, and Luminosity Gaming. Now, the first thing I wanna say, I know I said it, guys, group of death. In my opinion, Crazy Raccoon and Zeta are two of the three best teams at Worlds. And if you have that in the same group, I mean, that's, that's just insane. There are five world champion players in this group in and of itself, which I don't think I've ever seen that in Brawl Esports before. Everyone in this group has performed at LAN. Now, obviously, Crazy Raccoon and Zeta have had more LAN success than Luminosity, 
but Luminosity has now played in three or four different lands at this point, I think, so it's not like they lack any type of land experience. There's not too much to talk about in this group, honestly, because it's just such a good group and I have literally zero bad to say about anybody in this group or any team. So my predictions are going to be Crazy Raccoon finishes 2-0, Zeta finishes 1-1, one and, one, and LG finishes 0-2. Oh now, this can obviously go any way with how hard the group is, but the reason I have Crazy Raccoon first being 2-0 oh is because last year on day one, they finished 6-0 oh in sets, facing Foot and SK, which were both very, very good teams going into Worlds. Now, a lot of casual viewers might not know this, but when you're scrimming and practicing for a LAN, you practice a lot for your first matches in your first day. Crazy Raccoon, I believe, is going to have really strong drafts on day one, similarly like they had in 2023 World Finals. But then when day two comes, you know, things may become a little bit more difficult when you're drafting on the fly and you don't have two weeks to prepare a certain plan. But because they know how to draft on day one, just like they did last year, I have them going 2-0. Zeta, they were last year's world champions, and saying that they're going to go one and one in groups isn't necessarily a bad thing. I mean, they went one and one last year and they won worlds, so there's nothing wrong with losing in the group stage. But I just, I don't know. They're so good, so I can't have them being eliminated. But I also just believe so much in Crazy Raccoon, at least on day one, that I can't have them finishing ahead of them. And then unfortunately, we have Luminosity Gaming. And you guys know how I feel about LG. I love LG. They're my very close friends. And if anyone could win this world, I honestly do want it to be them. But I just don't see how I can be called non-biased if I put them above Zeta World Champions or Crazy Raccoon World Champions. I will say this though, if my life was on the line and I had to pick one team to get grouped, it would not be LG because they always figure it out on match day. So even though I'm predicting them to not make it out, it's because I want to be fair to all the teams and I don't want to be biased. And if I'm being completely honest, LG obviously has the lowest chance of making it out. But I do believe in my friends and I do think they're going to make it out of this group. Now, moving on to group D, I personally think this is the easiest group and I do have a couple reasons for it. I think there's no teams in this group who are super experienced at LAN. EF, which was formerly ECP, did have a really good LCQ. And OPE also came top four at Worlds last year. But Mebius did not do well at LAN last year. And Gugu, I do believe this was his first or second LAN. So it's not like he's super experienced himself. When you look at Humble, they have one of the most accomplished players of all time in Semantic. But it's very commonly known in the esports world that Semantic is a beast online. And unfortunately, for whatever reason, seems to fall short almost every time on LAN. Now, I do believe in you, my friend Semantic. I do want you to do well, and I hope you do come first in this group. But that's just how things have gone so far in Brawl Esports. They have Boss and Luki as well. Boss has made it to top 8 at Worlds, which is pretty good. And Luki made it to LCQ last year, but unfortunately didn't qualify out of it. So although Humble is one of the best teams at Worlds, I don't want to say their LAN experience isn't there yet because they do have LAN experience. They just don't have a good LAN history. I am hoping, though, that is turned around. And if anyone is going to turn around their land misfortunes, I do believe it's going to be humble this world. And then last but not least, we do have Rival, but I do have to talk a little bit about Rival. So Rival consists of Milkrio, Shu, and Melty, who are three really, really good players. Do not get me wrong. But at the same time, there have been four international events in a row where zero Japanese teams have gotten any wins outside of Crazy Raccoon. Go back to 2022 Worlds, where Japan finished first and second. They were the most feared region by a mile. Nobody wanted to face Japan. It was like an auto loss when you faced them. But they created a super team after 2022 World Finals that consists of Saitempo, Tensai, and Moya. And no other Japanese team has gotten an international win outside of that besides one time in a loser's bracket versus India, which is also not the most accomplished region. Now, I don't just want to say that because this region hasn't been performing well that these players aren't going to do well this time at World Finals, but if you are following the patterns, I do think Crazy Raccoon is the only scary team right now from East Asia, and until I see differently, that's where my mind is going to be placed right now. So for this group, I have EF actually going 2-0, Humble going 1-1, one and, one, and Rival going 0-2. Oh now that we've talked about the groups and who is going to move on, I'm going to give you guys my top three teams for who I think is going to win World Finals. Coming in at number three, we have Totem. Now, I know you guys might think Totem is a crazy pick, but I do have my reasons. I do think they're really good at land. Chaos, Maru, Mari... 
These guys are just absolute demons on land. They always go far. Mori and Mari are prior champions. They won in Japan a little bit over a year ago when they used to play with Joker. And then we have Chaos, and Chaos always rises when it comes to Worlds. Worlds is always when Chaos plays his best. And I totally believe he's going to play his best again at Worlds this year. Now, although they are really good, the reason why I do think that they can win Worlds is because they're probably going to have the easiest path to get there. Like I said earlier in the video, Group B faces Group D and Group A faces Group C. And at least according to myself, Group A and C are the two hardest groups and Group B and D are the two easiest groups. So for Totem, all they have to do is get out of Group B, which I think is one of the more easy ones. And then they go up against Group D, which doesn't have a SK, a Crazy Raccoon, a Zeta, a Elevate. Like there are good teams like EF and Humble and Rival, but I do like the way that Totem matches up against those teams. Coming in at number two, I have Crazy Raccoon. And if you don't have Crazy Raccoon, at least in your top two for your world's predictions, I mean, your video should probably not be published. Tensai and Sight are hands down the two best players in Brawl Esports history. And you can't take anything away from them. They are ice cold on land. They're absolute demons. And the only way I don't see these guys winning is if they just get out drafted like they have the last couple tournaments. Now draft is a really big part of the game. So I'm not talking like that might not happen. Like there is a really big chance that does happen. But surely if they're smart, which they are very smart, they know that draft is their weakness. They've been addressing it all year and they're going to fly early to worlds to prepare and try and learn exactly how to draft just as good or better than all the other teams in the world. And last but not least, the team that I think has the biggest chance of winning Worlds, no surprise here, is Zeta. Now, the reason I think Zeta has the biggest chance of winning Worlds is one, they still have the same roster as when they won Worlds last year. So they know exactly what they did last year, exactly what worked and what to do again. Secondly, I think they have a very similar path as they had last year when they won Worlds, where they had the hardest group which they did not win. And again, if they don't win this group, it's not the worst thing in the world. They can still go on and win worlds like they did last year. But I kind of feel like it's the same where they have a lot of hard matches early on. And when you have a lot of hard matches for early on, that kind of warms you up as long as you make it through. And then last but not least, this year, I do think Europe is by far in a way the best region. They've had a lot more tournaments than the other regions have this year, which does always happen, but it's been by a pretty big margin this year. And this is giving them the most practice by a mile. Now, I know a lot of people don't believe in Zeta right now because they haven't been performing as well as they normally do. But just like last year, they didn't perform well at all. There was a LAN one month before Worlds last year and they didn't even qualify to it. There's everything the exact same for Zeta this year as it is last year. And because of that, I just have to go with them winning Worlds. Now, we are still two weeks away from Worlds, so things might change. If I hear things from other pro players or I see something that might change my opinion, I might post something, maybe not a full video, but something at least a day or two before Worlds. But this is going to be my prediction video for now. So if you guys did enjoy this type of content, make sure to like, subscribe, do all of that. But that's going to be it for me today, and I'll catch you guys again later. Peace.